welcome to another expert talk series from Everything ALS. I just want to remind you all that this is um, PALS-driven research, and that means that we have opportunities if you'd like to join us and do a little bit of what I call inspirational work that might just move the needle in a big way. Um, right at the top of our uh, chat is the website that you can contact us and we'd love to have you join with us. So welcome aboard. And with that, Casey, it's all yours. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us tonight. Our speaker for today will be Mr. Alon Ben Noon. He is the co-founder and CEO of Neurosense Therapeutics. Mr. Alon Ben Noon is a life science executive who prior to the establishment of Neurosense founded Medican Consulting, which is a successful consultancy firm with clients from diversified biotech companies and mainly in the neurodegenerative space. Medican excelled at executing efficient and accurate and innovative drug development programs for its clients. Prior to that, Alon worked at Teva and Perigo. Please join me in welcoming our amazing speaker for tonight, Mr. Alon Ben Noon. Thank you very much, Casey. So I'm going to upload the presentation. It will be easier to do it with a few slides. Yeah. So I'm uh, really excited to be here. Good, uh, good afternoon and uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, it's an honor for me to speak again at Everything ALS event and to update on the impressive progress that Neurosense uh, had with the uh, advancing PrimeSys uh, development. Uh, Neurosense, as you all know, is a clinical stage biotech company that uh, develops uh, a, with a product candidate for ALS in an advanced clinical stage. And I'm going to focus today uh, mainly on, uh, well, actually on ALS, obviously. Um, Neurosense is uh, also publicly traded on, uh, on NASDAQ uh, under the ticker NRSN, and this is why we have this forward forward looking statements uh, just to mention that uh, we may i may provide forward looking uh, statements in the in this presentation so this is why i need to have this slide here i think that most of you know uh, the story um, and that uh, nursen started following an inspirational uh, meeting i had with the with the person here in the in the picture in the photo which i rishoni uh, who was the CEO of uh, Price for Life uh, and the um, head ALS uh, uh, himself. Um, and he was doing all his efforts, all the efforts to advance assistive technologies and therapies uh, in the field. And I think that to some extent or to, to a huge extent, Neurosense is one of the byproducts that uh, Shai left uh, as, a, as a legacy or not by product, maybe by product is not the right term. Um, and uh, our therapy is named as a tribute to him, to Shai. Uh, prime C uh, is translated, Prime actually translates to Rishoni in, uh, in Hebrew. And I'm super uh, uh, honored to, to uh, know, uh, uh, to new Shai and to name our product as a tribute to him. Um, okay, so Neurosense is, uh, again, a biotech company with a, a high focus, a highly focused on the developing novel therapies for, uh, for ALS and initial neurodegenerative diseases uh, with top-line results from the phase 2B study that we are currently conducting uh, by the end of this year. Um, and this is our lead uh, clinical program in uh, prime season, advanced stages of uh, clinical development. Uh, this past quarter, we also signed the partnership with uh, with Biogen and raised funds. Um, so uh, this carry us uh, through Q2 2024. Uh, of course, we have high expectations uh, from uh, the current study that we are conducting and from the results in December. We hope that we can really show a difference uh, in this disease and help uh, people who suffer from ALS and we'll know will be much smarter, of course, in December. Okay. So um, a little bit of, uh, of science. ALS uh, um, remains a, a high unmet need due to the heterogeneity and the, the complexity of the disease. 
um, since multiple pathways are, are involved. And um, it appears that the monotherapy simply not, is not enough to make a meaningful impact. Uh, Prime C aims to tackle ALS in a, from a diff, different angles, uh, utilizing combination therapy. Uh, as you know, uh, it's composed of celecoxib and ciprofloxacin, and um, who, uh, which work synergistically together to modulate key targets that lead to neuron, neuronal, uh, neuron death in, uh, in this uh, disease. So um, we developed a novel formulation uh, to maximize the synergism between ciprofloxacin and celecoxib and uh, synchronizing uh, their concentration peaks, as you can see here. Uh, just an example for the uh, novel uh, formulation. Uh, when we did the PK study, you can see how uh, beautiful it looks like overlapping each other in order to synchronize and maximize the synergism between the compounds. And that's uh, mainly about the, uh, the, the basic science. And now I'm moving to something very exciting. Um, since in addition to uh, outstanding results we had uh, in our preclinical program, we also had the honor to, uh, to be introduced to Dr. Justin Ichida. Uh, um, and um, apparently uh, Dr. Ichida conducted an independent study uh, on dozens of uh, compounds, comparing them uh, and uh, working on them in uh, iPSs, uh, induced uh, pluripotent stem cells, uh, coming from uh, uh, people with ALS, uh, transforming them into motor neurons and testing the compounds. Um, so, um, as you can see here in this uh, in this uh, graph, in this picture, uh, Prime C performed uh, favorably. Alongside its peers, you can see here that prime C a combination almost provided it was close uh, to uh, to the healthy control uh, cells, and this uh, was very nice to uh, to see when we were introduced to Justin Ichida. He conducted it uh, independently, and uh, it was super interesting. And now we are moving forward with the uh, with Dr. Ichida running additional studies. Uh, to better understand the uh, um, and elucidate the the mechanism of, uh, of prime C, and understand if it can work better on certain uh, group group of uh, of patients, uh, because obviously if we can maximize the impact the effect for some patients, we want to to make sure we know it and to to do it to make it happen. Okay, so in parallel to the preclinical uh, efficacy models. We have already completed the phase 2A study, an open label study um, with uh, uh, 15 participants. Uh, this was in uh, one single center in Israel, in Tel Aviv, uh, a while ago. And uh, uh, we were looking at safety, efficacy, and uh, biomarkers. This was being done, this was conducted with intermediate formulation of Prime C at the time. And uh, um, we're looking um, in the biomarkers mainly on TDP43 and the uh, prostaglandins, which are hallmarks of, uh, of ALS. And as you can see here and appreciate the, the results, this comparison was done to the PROACT database, uh, since again, it was an open label study. And we saw 30% difference in the, uh, the FVC, uh, forced vital capacity, and 18% difference in LSFRS. But I remind you, we have high hopes and high expectations from uh, the novel formulation that we developed with Prime C. Since now we moved uh, into the phase two B study, that study that we are currently conducting with the new formulation, with the novel formulation. So hopefully, with the higher dose and better formulation, I showed you the uh, pharmacokinetic profile. We hopefully can uh, um, can see better, uh, even better outcome than what we'd seen there. And just to mention that with regards to the biomarkers, we already uh, had seen biological changes uh, in these uh, participants where we reduced the toxic protein of TDP43 in these patients. Here we compare it to, uh, to patients who, who were not treated with prime C from a mass general. And these are participants in our clinical study in the phase 2A study. And here 
uh, is the same uh, uh, phenomena with prostaglandins. And again, I remind you that it was all conducted with the intermediate formulation. And following this, uh, these results, we moved into the uh, phase to be clinical, uh, uh, clinical trial paradigm study um, with uh, 69 participants. Uh, all of them were already enrolled into the trial in two to one ratio, prime C to placebo. Uh, the new formulation, I emphasize it all the time, the new formulation, because this is what provide us, uh, provides us with the high hopes and high expectations. A six months double blind period, and uh, then uh, participants can uh, choose to continue in an open label extension where we provide them with prime C, just prime C, no placebo, of course. There are several clinical uh, centers in Israel, Italy, and Canada, um, and we are looking at the primary efficacy of biomarkers, TDP43 and prostaglandins, where we, we already seen uh, statistically significant changes biologically. And uh, therefore, there is a very high likelihood that we'll uh, obtain this primary endpoint, and we'll see this phenomena again here. Uh, secondary efficacy is the ALS-FRS, uh, slow vital capacity and, uh, and survival. And of course, all the safety measurements, tolerability, and uh, all of that. OK. As we approach the end of uh, 2023, top-line results from our multiple national uh, clinical trial will be revealed here, you can see. And uh, once the participants uh, um, uh, complete, I mentioned it, uh, the double-blind part, they, are moving, they, are, they can choose to, to move into an open label extension. Uh, and I think, okay, I'll share with you some interesting uh, data about the uh, details about this uh, study in a second. Uh, just to mention that these results will uh, um, will have a, a heavy we will have heavy focus uh, on uh, biomarker research, uh, which Norsens uh, is conducting via strong collaborations with the industry partners uh, such as Biogen and leading academic uh, institutions such as uh, Harvard. And the information obtained from uh, from this uh, analysis will allow us to characterize. Uh, the patients, uh, hopefully, and uh, better, and uh, with expectations, as I mentioned, that we will be able to stratify uh, participants in a future phase three clinical study, so we'll be even more accurate and hopefully provide even a better uh, better outcome for uh, for these patients. So now I want to dwell. I'll I'll move one slide back, and I want to dwell a bit on the statistics from uh, the study thus far. So first, I'm, uh, I'm very glad to share with you that uh, uh, about two thirds of the participants already completed the six months dosing period. As I mentioned, all of the participants are uh, now in the study. Um, and there are about uh, 40, so two thirds is about 45 participants out of the 69 that completed the six months period. And over 96% of participants opted to continue into the open label extension. This is a very important uh, detail, I think. And uh, it is considered a very high number. So uh, apart from one participant, all of the participants that completed the six months period chose to continue into the open label extension. Um, so far, it seems that the drug is well tolerated and, uh, and safe. We have only one severe adverse event that may be related uh, to uh, the therapy. We are not sure even if it's related because we don't know if the participants that experience this uh, severe adverse event uh, is uh, in the active arm or the placebo arm. Uh, we'll know at the end of the study, obviously. Uh, but this is also an important detail because it's, it is considered a, a, a very little. And hopefully it will remain this way. So uh, only one severe adverse event that may be related to the, to the drug. Um, there is a very high compliance and uh, high retention in the study. Uh, and uh, of course, all of these are very good indications as for the interest of the participants and their satisfaction from the trial and the quality of the study. 
we are very excited to uh, uh, to move forward when we are moving forward and we will have top line results very soon in uh, in December and this will uh, of course educate us will be much smarter then in December and we'll share all the data of course with the community with you guys will be super pleased to expose and to share every and any data that we will uh, will have uh, from this study um, all the clinical uh, outcomes, all the biomarker, biomarker data. Um, so um, we're looking forward uh, to it. I would like to thank our scientific advisory board for the immense support. Uh, we are honored to have uh, these world renowned uh, uh, clinicians on our uh, team. I'm sure all of you uh, know most of them, at least if not all of them, we love them and we appreciate the fact that they are supporting us uh, uh, and believe in the potential that Prime C has. I would like to also thank our devoted collaborators who are helping to turn uh, our vision into reality and are working very hard with us in order to provide an effective therapy uh, to uh, people in need with, uh, with ALS. So uh, thank you very much uh, for uh, for being here today, this afternoon, this evening, and uh, and listening. And I'll be glad to answer any questions that uh, that you may have. Have you noticed any um, tendon ruptures with the uh, chlorofluoroquinolones with the ciprofloxacin? So with Prime C, yeah. basically. So the answer yeah. is no, no, no tender ruptures in okay. uh, either of our studies. Okay, because it is a, a known risk factor. Yes, we are certainly aware of it. We are also aware that according to the label of ciprofloxacin, it's, uh, there is a, about 2% that uh, are experiencing tender rupture, about two, roughly 2%. We had uh, never seen any uh, anything like that in neither of our studies. Okay, okay, that's that's interesting. Thank you, Alon. So the first question that we have in the chat is, will Prime C be in the Healy trial? That's a, that's a good question. Uh, we are not certain about it. We are in discussions with the uh, Professor uh, Sukovic, with Merit, um, and we need to find out, of course, once we reveal the, the results from a paradigm, if uh, the platform trial is the is the best platform, next platform to conduct the pivotal study or an independent, not independent, or our sponsored the phase three study that we will design according to the findings, according to the biomarkers. Uh, so I cannot uh, provide a firm answer now. Uh, we'll have to see the results from uh, the current study first. Uh, perfect. Thank you. Next question is, was Dr. Cheetah's initial study conducted with the intermediate formulation of Prime C or the new formulation? For a follow-up, when do you expect to report results from the additional studies of Prime C being conducted by Dr. Cheetah? Okay, so with regards to the formulation, uh, Dr. Cheetah didn't, uh, it's, uh, he's studying uh, the, the combination on cells. So we didn't use the final formulation, but the compounds themselves together, combined together. And with regards to the additional studies, so uh, I think and I hope that in the next several uh, weeks, we can uh, already uh, uh, tell uh, the, um, let's see and tell the, the outcomes from uh, the additional studies that uh, we are conducting. And then the next question is, will there be an expanded access program for the PALS in the US or anywhere in the world? So it, it's definitely something that we would like to do. Uh, with regards to the current study, so of course we have the open label extension. Expanded access is something that uh, we, are, we, we desire to do. And I think that uh, again, after the phase two study, when we reveal the results and we understand the impact uh, of Prime C on the participants uh, will be first smarter and will know where and, and when to run the uh, expanded access uh, program. And we will also be able to raise the, the funds in order to uh, support these uh, programs because obviously uh, 
the sponsor has to uh, to support to some extent, sometimes even to the full, uh, these programs, and we would definitely want to do it for participants who cannot, for people who cannot participate in the future studies. Um, so uh, this is uh, one of our intentions. Perfect. Next question is, which lung and gut microbiome biomarkers are you analyzing? That's a good question. Uh, we are looking also at uh, microbiome uh, um, biomarkers, but uh, I cannot uh, um, detail the, the exact uh, biomarkers that we are uh, looking at. Then we have a question um, asking, when are the results from the Biogen-sponsored neurofilament study expected? Um, hopefully. Hopefully we'll have them already in December alongside the clinical outcome. Um, but it depends also on the pace that Biogen, because we, we um, will ship the samples to Biogen and hopefully it will be in December. If not, then probably January. Uh, perfect. Next question is, uh, is the study looking at changes in speech or fine movements? Sorry, can you please repeat? Oh, sorry, but I spoke too fast. I said, uh, the question is, is this study looking at changes in speech or fine movements? So as part of the ALSFRS, of course, it's, uh, as you all know, it's very detailed. Um, so we are going to also analyze according to the different sections in the ALSFRS. And then, um, we have someone asking if this would be synergistic with an ASO. We don't know yet. Okay. Until we will test it, we we cannot answer this question. We're getting more questions in the chat. Next question is: Since this compound contains an antibiotic, is it contraindicated in people that have chronic infections? It depends uh, what kind of uh, um, chronic uh, therapy, chronic uh, drug they are uh, receiving. It depends on the drug that they are uh, receiving. And then our next question is um, regarding patient enrollment size. So they wanted to know how does the size of patient enrollment impact the chances of obtaining a statistically significant positive result? So currently the study with 69 participants is powered to over 90%, uh, around 95%. Uh, that's, uh, that's how the study is currently powered to obtain the primary endpoints, which are uh, prostaglandins and TDP43 changes. Um, it, uh, it does not uh, reflect the uh, ALSFRS. Hopefully we'll have um, such an impact that we'll, we are crossing fingers to see also statistically significant results there, but a, a trend, a clear trend will be suffice at this stage. But again, we want it all. We want to see statistically significant changes also in the secondary outcomes. Perfect. Next question is, how does Prime C compare to regimens F and G in Healy that also targets the TDP43 issue? in terms of mechanisms of action? So I'm not familiar with any compound, any other compound, neither in the Healy or anywhere else that is targeting the exact mechanisms that Prime C is targeting. Uh, so I cannot really compare what uh, other uh, treatments or compounds are, uh, how they are affecting TDP43. I know, for example, that in ASO mentioning it, by uh, Curalis is also targeting uh, TDP43. Uh, and I assume, like uh, neuroinflammation, that there are also other compounds that may affect the, the le levels of uh, TDP43. And then are your 69 trial participants also taking other ALS therapies? So the participants are allowed to take uh, either approved therapies, basically. They are allowed to take approved therapies. So if they are on an approved therapy, 
and they are stable uh, on this approved therapy, uh, they entered into the, the study. Hey, Alon, I think that is all the questions I see in the chat. Does anyone have any more questions? Please feel free to ask. Yeah, if it's easier to ask and not to write, please go ahead, feel free. Yeah, I have a question. Um, and I know you're studying this in ALS. Is there uh, maybe any potential collaborations with uh, organizations that may be looking at this and other upper motor neuron disorders such as PLS as HSP? I know Northwestern is doing a study now uh, combination with like NU9 and Rylazole and some things like that, but they're looking at several um, upper motor neuron disorders. And I was curious if, um, you know, this may be expanded to other ones. That's a very nice thought. Um, we are not exploring currently PLS, uh, but mainly focus uh, all our efforts on, on ALS. And at a certain point, hopefully we'll, we can also divert uh, to to PLS. Thank you. For the next question we have is when will you disclose the amount of each ingredient? Um. So I think it's not. Um, it's it's something that according to the regulatory agencies, you are not supposed to do uh, out loud because these uh, these are two approved therapies, and the regulatory agencies, they don't like companies to just come out and reveal something like that and encourage people to uh, do experiments on their own, but to re maintain it under control, under the sponsor's control. And also I have to uh, to mention that we it, it's a different formulation. It's not just the two compounds and the, the amounts, but the formulation itself counts. One more question asking, are any of your research participants genetic carriers of mutations like SOD1 or C9 ORF72? So yes, the, the answer is yes. Um, we have few patients with a genetic form of the disease. And of course, we are going to uh, look at them and, and analyze the results also accordingly to see if there is a better impact there or, or, or maybe less or to understand better this, uh, these forms of uh, the disease. Does anyone have any more questions? Okay, well, if not, Alon, thank you so much for your hard work and dedication. Um, I'm sure everyone here really appreciates you coming tonight to share all this information. So thank you. Thank you very much for hosting me and uh, all of the team at Neurosense. I have to mention that are super dedicated and, and inspired by you guys, by Shai and by each and every one of you that uh, is uh, fighting and battling and uh, this, this horrible disease. And you are an example to us how to, to move forward faster because time is of the essence and to battle this together with you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Alon. Very nice.